If you would like to learn how to build a camper van like this yourself, then please check out my other YouTube videos. So if you guys have found these videos helpful, you can help me out in a big way by picking up a copy of my first ever album that my brother and I recorded in Nashville late last year. Any proceeds will go to future recording projects as well as taking the van on tour and hopefully promoting it. I'll leave a link in the description and talk a little bit more about it at the end of this video. Cool, so for my table, I've gone and bought a 12mm MDF board. You could use plywood as well if you want to, but 12mm uh, is pretty good because it's not too heavy, but it retains enough strength that it's not going to bow or anything as you're using it. So I'm going to make my measurements across here. It was 65 centimeters long. I'm going to want it to be uh, 35 centimetres long for now and then I'll cut it down to 30 if I fill that width will be okay. Basically what we're going to do is I'm going to cut this to size, check it out, I can go and sit inside the camper van and see how that feels, if it's comfortable to sit around. I'm using MDF for two reasons, one is because it's cheaper than plywood and secondly because it's more resistant to moisture. So go ahead and cut your board to size. I'm actually going to wear a respirator as well because uh, MDF dust isn't very nice to inhale. Once yours is cut to size, you can go and put it in place and just check out whether it's the size you want it to be and then make any adjustments accordingly. So I'll show you some of the designs I've saved. I basically went onto Google Images and just saved a bunch of different things. Uh, but we're going to go for this one here, if you can see that. Uh, but you can really go as intricate or as simple as you want to. I mean, this one here is a really lovely design as well. So you can really go to town on this and sort of just pursue whatever takes your fancy. So what we're going to do in this case then, is we're going to be cutting these at sort of 45 degree angles, kind of following that design, or you can make up your own design, of course. And uh, then we'll piece them all together on the board and we'll go ahead and stain these pieces of timber accordingly. So I've got a few different wood stains. Uh, I've got a walnut one here, which I will most likely use. I've got this weathered oak one from Minwax, which again I will most probably use even though I've never opened that. There's a mahogany one, I've used this one before, but it looks a little too thick for me. Uh, I've got an ebony one. And you could also use paints. You can get these little um, tester paint pots for a couple of quid if you wanted to do some different colours and everything. So really, just do it how you like. Okay, so I'm going to need an even amount of boards on the top side of my table, as well as on the bottom side. So to do that, I need to work from the centre of the table outwards to ensure it looks nice and even as we come away. So to do that, I've measured the width and I've just drawn a line straight across the middle of our table. So that will now indicate to us where we need to lay all of our boards. So the first one will sit there, right underneath it, and we'll have another one right on the top of that line. The timber that I'm using for these outer pieces are pine, uh, reason being because it's fairly inexpensive to buy and it also takes on stain quite well. Um, you want to go for a thickness of between probably six and eight millimetres. Anything further than that, there could be a tendency for it to bow. Um, anything thicker and you're just adding extra weight and sort of bulk to the table. Everyone's table is going to be different, the measurements are going to be different and your design might be different as well. Um, so there's no real diehard way I can sort of tell you how to do this. But one thing I have done is uh, looking at the image as a template, um, seeing that there are five pieces across the centre. So I've taken my total length, divided that by five and that kind of vaguely tells me um, how long each cut needs to be. So that would be 13 centimetres in my case. One thing that's going to be really helpful is to clamp all your pieces together. It's going to make the cuts far quicker. I've got four pieces that are all going to be exactly the same. So by me clamping four pieces together, we're going to get that all done in once as opposed to doing each one individually and most probably being a different size very slightly to each other. This will also ensure that they're all the correct size. Also, if you're going to be doing some really intricate work, you're going to need a mitre saw that has a hand saw as opposed to a power tool like this, which is going to totally tear it apart. And you can go ahead and get it to a 45 degree angle. 
it's really important that you definitely make sure that it is at 45 degrees, otherwise your pieces of timber aren't going to butt up against each other correctly. So make sure that is well spot on. Go ahead, start marking out the cuts. pieces. So just so you can see them, kind of takes a little bit of shape there. Don't worry if you've got any overhang here, because later on we're going to take this to the table saw and we're just going to make sure that all of these edges are nice and flush with each other. Right, so next up I'm going to go ahead and sand all these pieces individually. Um, I'm using some 240 grit sandpaper because this is all pretty smooth anyway. Uh, it's just to make sure that any of these cut edges are nice and seamless. So get your respirator on and give each individual piece a sand. So go to your edges and just make sure if there's any splintering at the end of the wood that you manage to sand it off, but obviously don't take away the hard edges and bevel them, otherwise you'll, it will come up on your table when it comes to finishing it and putting them all back together again. And just make sure that uh, before you go ahead and use your stain, that you do stir it well. sort of become one uniform colour then you can go ahead and apply it to your test pieces. I'm just using some scrap pieces of wood here just to check it all out. Okay, and then again just apply it across the grain. Um, just one thing to note with these stains, the longer that you leave them on the darker they're going to stain the wood. Uh, just make sure after sort of between 5 to 15 minutes that you wipe away any excess. If you leave it, all the excess on there, it's just going to make the wood quite sticky and not leave a very nice finish. So just get some paper towels or a rag or something and just wipe away that excess after 5 to 15 minutes. Uh, just looking at this now, I've kind of put these on here to kind of gauge whether I like it or not. One thing you can do though to help you decide, if you're using say three colours for example, you could put the three colours to one side and see which works best. So I'm just going to go ahead now and follow in the template that we have. I'm going to go and stain each of these pieces of timber. There's my first lot of staining done, and I think that looks pretty cool as it is. You can go ahead and put more coats on to make it darker, but I'm quite happy with the, the light ebony look that it's got. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use some of the walnut stain on a few pieces as well, and then we're good to go. Cool, so if, like me, you're not kind of sure you totally like something the way it is, you could take a blank piece like this, and a stained one, just swap them over, and you could turn this one over to its unstained side, just see if that helps improve what you're looking after. Do the same with these bits. Bear it like this. It's up to you. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start gluing these pieces down now. We're just going to be using some Gorilla Wood glue again. So just make sure, obviously, 
that this area is nice and clear so there's nice contact for the glue itself. And then we just apply a little bead around the back. Okay, we'll try and get it around the edges just to stop them bowing in case they ever did. And you can apply a bit more in the middle where it's not going to push out quite so much. Okay, so we've got our centre line here from earlier, so I'm just going to follow that and put our first piece into place. Just press it down. We'll just follow this with our other pieces. So whilst I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm going to go ahead and start doing the trim. We can start cutting this down to the desired depth we want it to be. You can go ahead now and just cut four pieces to size. Uh, just make sure you've got a little bit of overhang here uh, to allow for our cut a little bit later. We're going to do some 45 degree angled cuts at the ends. So as you can see in my router here, We've put in this sort of 45 degree angled router bit in place and it's got a ball bearing on it so it's going to follow the, well not a ball bearing, a bearing on it so it's going to follow the side of the timber. I'm just holding it into place here and then we can run the router across the side to give us that angled edge. Make sure you allow plenty of time for your glue to dry. So we're about to put it through the table saw and if anything's a little bit loose or not tacked down properly, it's gonna come flying off. So once you have allowed enough time, you can then run it through. And we're gonna run across these edges. As you can see, we've got plenty of things sticking out there. So we wanna go around all four edges and basically just make sure they're nice and flush with each other, you know, both the MDF and the uh, pine. Okay, and there we have it. We now have some really nice flush edges. Okay, so I'm just going to go around, sand all these edges using some 240 grit sandpaper. So, now everything's ready to roll. We need to cut these pieces of trim here at a 45 degree angle. And the purpose of these trims is just to finish off these edges so that you can't see the two joins between the pine boards and the MDF board. And also just to give it a nice finish as well. So I'm going to take a pencil, I'm going to butt up my pieces of trim. Okay, I'm going to use the side of the board to draw where we need to make our cuts. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of these. Okay, so just line up your markings with the table saw and then you can start making your cuts. I'm just going to go ahead and sand it with some 240 grit sandpaper until it's smooth to the touch. Okay, now that all our pieces are sanded down and free of debris, we can go ahead and start staining these. So if you like it how it is, you can of course leave it as it is, but just remember as well to stir your stain again. So I'm just going to go along these edges. Yeah, make sure again that it's all free of debris. And I'm going to use some of our beloved friend Gorilla Wood Glue here. Just put a nice even mode across timber. 
Okay, and then we'll pop it into place. And I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. Okay, I'll pop that into place. I'm going to remove these two for now. And I'm going to take a few of these longer clamps here to help secure that. If you see any excess glue, just make sure you wipe it away at this stage. Just do those two sides, let it dry for half an hour, then come and do the other two sides. So we're at the point now where we can go ahead and finish our tabletop and our bin lid. I'm just going to give it a protective finish because our bin lid, for example, is going to have a lot of grub on it and we want it to be able to clean it nice and easily. Same with the tabletop. So I'm going for a polyurethane finish. As I said, this will give it a protective coat. This one's from Rust-Oleum and it's a clear finish and it's going to give a gloss look as well. So it's going to have a little bit of a sheen to it. If you don't want that, you can go for a matte finish, or if you want something in between, then you can go for a satin finish. And first things first, we're going to shake this up. Shake it for about a minute. So you want to make sure that both your pieces are nice and clear of any debris or anything like that, otherwise it's going to get stuck on there. You also want to make sure that your surrounding area is free of things that you don't want any of this spray to land on. As you can see, I put the tarpaulin down as well, just to protect the floor. So then you can basically go ahead in about, you're about 30 centimetres, so a foot away from whatever workpiece you're working on, and you can just spray it in a light coat from side to side across your workpiece. And we're basically going to spray several light coats across it over a few minutes. And you want to keep shaking it up as well as you go along. You want to be in a well-ventilated area, I haven't said that as well. Here we go. And I'm going to use a scrap piece of timber here to pick up the tabletop, turn it over, and then lay it on top of there so it's not touching the floor, the face that we've just sprayed. So just give it a few minutes in between coats and we can turn it back over again, do the other side, do that several times and uh, once it's had enough time to dry, which should be about a few hours for it to be uh, touchable, I think you should leave it 24 hours to fully dry so it's something you could just kind of leave overnight and come back to the next day once you've applied all your coats. Right, one thing we're going to do is just add a little handle on here so that it's easy for us to take the table in and out of our storage area. So just take a pencil. Mark off where the screws are. I'm going to put a pilot hole in first as always and then we can screw it down. Thanks for stopping by everybody. Please like and subscribe and check out our other content on all things camper. As I mentioned before, I've just recorded my first album and will need all the help I can get. So I'll leave you with an album preview for now and a link in the description if you'd like to pick up a copy. She does all that she can
You put their cold and harsh demeanor It'll soon come back around So don't let the bastards get Make it mine on my own.